God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ah, I love baptisms. They're always fun. Dedicating our lives to Jesus Christ means so much to take Him into our hearts to receive those blessings that come from that. You know, Advent is kind of interesting stuff, isn't it? We've had a lot of talk, a lot of reflection, time to focus, but also time for discipline in our own lives, haven't we? And you know, for many of us, we're still trying to prepare for Christmas, aren't we? And in fact, we're trying to get all those gifts bought and, and think of the perfect thing to give to the person that we love, aren't we? Does anybody struggle with that? It drives me nuts knowing what am I going to give my family? Now, luckily, my wife has already taken care of all the, the Kemery gifts, which I limited to two this year. I had to put my foot down as dad to say, only two, only two. We don't want to go overboard because we know Grandma and Grandpa are going to spoil her to death. Well, you know, in all of this hustle and bustle, there are two types of people. First are the type that probably shocked like four months ago for Christmas. Anybody in here like that? Anybody get all your gifts done? Pat, you said you did? Oh, you're wonderful. <laughs> She's thinking way ahead. This is great. Well, that's your first type. The person that's way ahead of the game. They, I mean, they've got that list all taken care of, all their shopping done. They didn't have to worry about Black Friday and worry about whether, oh, am I going to be able to get this and get that? They found some pretty good deals probably over the summer. Is there anybody like me that I'm so cheap that I'll go right after Christmas when you get 90% off? <laughs> That's the best time to go. <coughs> Absolutely. But then let me ask this question. How many people remember the show Family Ties? Anybody? Do you remember their Christmas holiday special where, and I forget Michael J. Fox's character name. What was it? Alex Keaton. Alex was kind of bah humbug about the whole Christmas thing, right? Ah, oh, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in gifts. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. Fool you. But something happened in his life. Something happened that turned him around. And where did he have to shop? At the local go-go mart for Christmas. Because nobody else was open. They didn't have Walmarts back then. They, all that was open was the 7-Eleven. And I remember watching that show, watching him have to go in and buy his mom a People magazine and his sister a little bit of licorice, and I'm thinking, gee, what's wrong with that? So those are the two types of people in preparation for Christmas. The overachievers and the procrastinators. And then probably just the rest of us that float right down the middle. Well, let me ask this question. You know, we've talked a lot about peace and joy and hope for the last three weeks of Advent. And you know, when we think about peace, we, we seek peace in our lives, don't we? Parents, you're always seeking peace and quiet around the house, aren't you? You're trying to find ways to just find that I can relax a little bit. I, I'm looking for that special place. You know, I'm right in the middle and, and Chris knows he's helping me build that man cave. That is my, my place for peace where I can go watch football and not get ridiculed and, and just relax. That is where I find peace. <coughs> not really. And then we talk about joy. You know, we talked last week about joy. We think joy and happiness go hand in hand, don't we? Really, to come to find out that happiness is just a part of our own wants, a part of our own desires. But joy is something that we live with all of our lives. That joy that comes in knowing about Jesus Christ and knowing what he's done for us. And then we talk about hope. You know, for many people, they have no hope. For many in this world, they have nothing in life to be thankful for. So they think, well, you know, I've got shelter. I've got food on my plate. But there's no hope. This country's going to pot. I don't have any extra money. 
My next door neighbor's got a brand new Lamborghini and I'm driving, driving this tiny little something. Don't know what it is anymore because the rust has taken it over. I have no hope. My job is terrible. I hate going to work. <coughs> my coworkers, they stab me in the back all the time. There's no hope. I look at the madness of going to these big shopping places and waiting in line for 40 minutes. And then our pastor told us that we need to leave the person behind us ahead of us. And I just never seem to get ahead. Because I'm always letting people go ahead of me. Where is my hope? Well, I have some answers for some of this. And I started this out today with a bunch of questions. Because isn't life a big question mark? Isn't life that big question mark that we draw with that little dot right at the end? And wonder, what is my life all about? What does my life mean? Where do I go from here? How do I get ahead in life? Well, let's talk a little bit. I want you to open your Bibles. We're going to go to 1 John chapter 4. I want to talk about this. 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to talk about our fourth week of Advent. And I love the theme of Advent. It's always fun. 1 John chapter 4, beginning at the 7th verse. 1 John chapter 4, the 7th verse. Hear these words. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. His love has been brought to full expression through us. So let me ask another question. What kind of giver are you? What kind of giver are you? Well, I've got four types of givers that I want to talk about today. One is the practical giver. This one is the one that always gets you exactly what you need. Underwear, t-shirts, socks, all that stuff when you open it up in front of the rest of your family. You're so embarrassed, your face turns beet red, and you go, Mom, what were you thinking? I can't underwear. I'm 17 years old. I don't wear Superman underwear anymore. <laughs> or your girl, she says, well, I'm 14. I'm not wearing Dora the Explorer underwear and T-shirts. What are you guys doing to us? Carrie, I will be okay. <laughs> <coughs> Traditional giver is always the one who gives you those kind of sensible gifts, don't they? Guys like the sensible givers because we get tools. Oh, oh, oh. Anybody remember Tim? Tool time, Tim. And that, you know, that wonderful coffee table that you're always looking for. All oh, those kitchen aid appliances and those spatulas. Just, you know, you could probably put them in with a practical giver, but these are the sensible kind of givers. I like those kind of givers. Because every once in a while, I, I need a new tool or even a new spatula to make up something in the kitchen. And then I call the duty giver, number three. These ones, to me, are always the fun ones. Because they're obligated to get you something. And you're just as obligated to give them something. And then you wonder, what am I going to give them? I know I have to give them something, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on them. I have a duty to get them something. So what do you do? You run to Walmart and you get them a box of the, the Wally World <coughs> chocolates, right? And then you wonder, okay, I'm getting them this dollar box. I wonder if I'll get a $10 gift. Makes you wonder. And then 
The real funny people. The practical joker giver. These are the people that think it's funny to go buy you a will be Christian. These are the people that think it's funny to go buy you a rubber chicken. What are you possibly going to do with a rubber chicken? I don't know if you're like us, but we always have Christmas. You always have to bring a gift to exchange. Well, somehow this chicken seems to make it in this box every single year. Well, many of you know my mother is very creative. So she came up with, let's make it. Oh, this is all kinds of fun. In fact, we're having our family Christmas at 12.30 today with that side of the family. And we're going to have, let's make a deal, gift exchange. And I wonder if the chicken will come back up. And if I have it next week, you'll know. <laughs> well, you know, I think about gifts. I, I think about giving. And I think about receiving. I, th I think, gee, what are these packages under the table? I'm worse than Henry. Henry goes over and, you know, she'll kind of touch it a little bit. She'll hear the paper crinkle. And then she'll take the bow and she'll pull on it a little bit. Oh, no. Dad just goes over there. What's in the box? I hope it didn't break. But what is giving? And what is our gift this season? You know, as I think about it, I, as a pastor, I have no choice but to think about the gift of Jesus. And I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's awesome that we have opportunity for a play. I think it's great and awesome opportunity, especially at Christmas, for holy baptism and dedication to Jesus Christ. I think about the gift. You know, how many people have always said, don't bother giving me anything. I don't need anything. I've got enough in life already. You're just going to add to my problem. And the next thing you know, TLC is going to be showing up my door wanting to do a hoarding show at my house. <laughs> I don't need anything. I don't need anything else. I don't need that 10-pound brick of chocolate because that 10-pound 10 10 pound brick is going to go right here. <laughs> and then i got to go to the pastor for counseling to talk about 10 pounds of chocolate and what it did to me. Is that Christmas? Is that fun? But then I think about gift-giving and Berea Children's Home. You know, last, with, last year I shared with you the story of the child that we gave the gift to went over, and all he wanted was mom and dad. He didn't want anything else. Here he was, separated from his parents, for some reason, whatever it was, all he wanted was mom and dad for Christmas. I think about the giving of those gifts to those children, watching the expressions on their faces, because that's all they'll know for Christmas, some of them. They're institutionalized for Christmas and can't be with their families. And then I think about my family. We're, we're going to be getting together. I think about our congregation. We're going to get together for some food and fun after church today. And I think about love. You know, we have an opportunity when we go to Berea Thursday to show love. And that is our theme this week. And that's what I'm going to work on here for the next couple minutes, is to talk about the gift of love. You know, love comes in many different shapes and forms. Sometimes we wonder, how can we wrap love in a box? I told Betty, well, she was here this week, or here today, and then I called her on the phone. Because I know when she packages that cheese, she knows how much I love that cheese that she puts in that ball. And to me, that's, that's homemade love. Because as I took that whole pack of crackers and sat down with that dish of love, <laughs> I loved every bite of it. <laughs> and in fact, I loved it so much, there's no more left. In fact, I loved it so much, it was done in one sitting. And she knows that from last year, because I told her the same thing. But that's, a, that's an example of, of love packaged in a gift. She made that, and she gave that. And she didn't know I was going to be using her as an example today. Thank you, Betty, for <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it, I look forward to that love gift every year. But you know, I think about love in different packages that we have. What does that look like to you? Do we just give presents because it makes people happy? Or are we truly giving things to people because we're showing and expressing our love? You know, sometimes Christmas gets a little carried away, doesn't it? Sometimes Christmas gets carried away to the point where are we missing the point of loving and giving? Or well, we're just giving to impress. We're giving our child 10 gifts because we need to impress them. And next year, we've got to give them 11. Because if we don't give them 11, 10 wasn't enough. And then we've got to give them 12 the next year. I've got to take a part-time job. Because now I can't afford all the 13, 14, 15 gifts. You know, love also comes in receiving, doesn't it? Love comes in receiving the gift of love from other people. And love gets expressed through a thank you. You know, my thank you to Betty is standing up here and talking about my gluttonous and how much I enjoyed that. How many people give thanks? You know, we've talked a lot about Thanksgiving. We've talked a lot about thanking the people in our lives for the things that they do. I thank this congregation for all that you've done to support this ministry and this church and all the things that we do to make a difference in people's lives. That comes from the love of Jesus Christ that we do those things. We are thankful for that. I'm thankful that, that people are willing to commit their lives to Christ, to, to commit to a level to want to come for holy baptism and to dedicate their lives to Christ. That's a loving, thankful heart. You know, we've always heard that love endures all things. Love forgives. Love disciplines. Love provides for everything that we need. And that love comes from Christ. So when I ask this question, what is love to you? Is love the, the billboard that we see going down the road? Oh, you'll love to drive this new car. Stop on in and take a whip. For those who don't know, there was, it's been a kind of a lasting joke because I've encouraged this congregation. We had a message where we talked about going to a new car dealer and called whipping. And sitting in the car just taking in the smells of a new car. Some of us love to do that. What does love to you? What does love mean to you? You know, some of us love being loved by other people, don't we? Spouses, you love to be loved for who you are, as imperfect as you are, and as special as you are, right? I'm not perfect. Write it down. Commit the time to memory. None of us are. The only thing perfect we have in our lives is the love that comes from Jesus Christ. That love that we can spread throughout this world to spread to the hearts of people who need it. You know, I talked to Cindy this morning and listened to the love that takes place for Hillsdale Cares. I talked to many people this week who have made a difference in people lives. That is love. I've watched people let other people step in line ahead of them. That is love. I've watched people give a hand of help. That is love. I've watched people pray for other people. That is love. I've watched family members help others and help one another. That is love. So let me ask you, what is love to you? You know, as I close today, I want us to think about love. Think about that love that Jesus has for you. What can that love do for you? That love is for free. It doesn't cost anything. We don't have to pay anything to get that. It's already been paid for. 
no gift in this world greater than Jesus Christ. 